fall troops are back tonight, but it was a March Madness of a different kind in Worcester this weekend, and a familiar face is back in town for some Crusader fans. Former Holy Cross hockey coach Paul Perk Paul Pearl is back in Worcester as his Crimson play in the Northeast Regional, and he's looking to take the team further than they went last year. First off, just to be in the tournament is fantastic. You know, the kids had a great year this year, and, you know, it's a reward to get here, and now we were here last year, too, so we want to take it further than we did. Um, and then for me personally, you know, it's great. I was hoping this would be the regional we'd go to, and, you know, good to see everybody that I know and, and all the Holy Cross people are running the tournament, so it's, it's kind of fun. While at Holy Cross, Pearl became the all-time winningest coach in 2006 after notching his 168th win, and Harvard head coach Ted Donato is pleased with what Pearl has brought to the Crimson staff. Paul's done a great, uh, great job with our defense, defense core. He's done a great job with our power play, which has been amongst the tops in the in the country all year. You know, I just think Paul is a, you know, is a first class person and a tremendous hockey coach. So uh, he he's made a, a major impact in a positive way, and uh, we feel, you know, very fortunate to have him with us. Harvard will take on Boston College tomorrow night, and the Eagles are no stranger to Worcester and the DCU Center. Their last five Frozen Four appearances have taken the Eagles through the city for regional play, and four of those ultimately leading to a national title. But head coach Jerry York doesn't see any correlation between the team's success and the city. It's, it's a hockey game, it's a hockey rink, and it's, you can't say, hey, we won here in this particular year, so we have to win. Uh, T uh, tomorrow night, so it's a it's a brand new brand new uh, situation for us each year, and you know the, if we won that many times, so we played very very well when we've won. So nobody gets let you advance to the next to the final championship game. And Grafton native Ian Milos is listed as a backup goalie for the Eagles, and we look forward to see what his future holds for the hockey team. And Providence College earlier this morning was the first time to hit the ice. The defending national champs are the number one seed in Worcester, and it's a different path from a year ago, but PC feels that they've already been tested this year, and no seeds don't matter. We realized it was going to be a very tough, uh, tough year. We're going to get everyone's A game, and it was going to be difficult to get back to this spot. Um, so uh, very excited to be here, very happy to be here, and, and looking forward to playing uh, tomorrow night. It's the best 16 teams in the country. Last year we were, we were a four seed, this year we're a one seed. To us it's irrelevant, it's just about getting the job done. And all 16 teams here can win a national championship and we're going to try to do that. Minnesota Duluth was the last team to qualify for the NCAA field. The Bulldogs are capable and want to take advantage of their opportunity. Obviously it's a great regional with the teams that are here, very difficult. I think uh, the whole 16 team field is going to be a real battle and it's Pretty wide open, I think, for a lot of teams. But uh, you know, our guys are, like I said, excited to to get back here. Certainly, teams are confident this this time of year. Um, they've obviously won some games to get into this position, in the top 16. And um, I think Coach touched on it as well that uh, any team can win this. I think it's uh, pretty wide open. There's obviously a lot of good teams, and it's going to take some good hockey to win. And a look at the brackets for this weekend. The puck drops at 4.30 tomorrow as number one Providence takes on number four Minnesota Duluth. That game is followed by a beanpot matchup between four, number two Boston College and number three Harvard at 8 p.m. The winners from each of those games will go on to meet Saturday in the Northeast Regional Championship game. That game starts at 9, and here we are earlier today at Granger Diamond for a baseball game between Clark and Nichols. Bottom of the first, two on, two out. Stigerick McKelney gets his man to chase the breaking ball, and the side is retired. Top of the second, Clark's Connor Walsh with the K, throwing the heat. Bottom second, Clark's Adam Choketrick rips one, but Nick Ozma lays out for the stop. I'm sure McKelney was pretty thankful for that one. Top of the third, no outs. Ian Walsh fires one in to get strike three called. Cougars down three at that point. Same inning, two down, and a man on second. Nichols Ross Cam Caswell drives one into center, bringing home another run. The Bisons are up 4 nothing. Nichols trying to be aggressive on the bases, but Walsh steps off the rubber, and he gets the rundown started. David Estrin tags the runner out at home, 
to, e to end the inning, but Nichols gets the win. 6-3 is her final. And a quick note, congratulations to Algonquin football coach Justin McKay, who received a national award from the Positive Coaching Alliance today. Justin is only one out of 50 national winners. So congratulations to Justin. Football season right around the corner, right? Yeah, basically. It's <laughs> what it feels like. Yeah, uh, it's exciting stuff too for hockey to be back in Worcester. Obviously no Sharks this season, so it's nice to finally have some big time hockey in that arena. Yeah, definitely. You could definitely feel the excitement in the arena. All the guys that were all about hockey and they had to kind of lay low this year with no Sharks. But that should excited. be a fun weekend, no yeah, question definitely. about it. definitely. All right, thanks, Brennan. Appreciate it. All right, for Brennan Wilson, I'm Tim McCone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow night at 6. Thank you.